I'm going to introduce you to the chalamo. And looking at this little instrument, you might be thinking that it's going to have a high sound. I think you might well be surprised. I'm going to introduce you to this beautiful instrument, the chalamo. And probably they've been around since as early as the 12th century, but certainly by 1687, there was the very first mention of the instrument, the chalamo. And by the 1700s, they were firmly established as a proper instrument. And the woodwind maker, J.C. Denner, had already started to develop the instrument and make it into this wonderful instrument you can see here. I think there are 10 originals left in the world, so not very many. My one here is a copy. And um, they probably originated in France and then quickly spread over to Germany. The very first Chalamot duets were published in Amsterdam in 1706 and that was a long time before any clarinet duets were ever published. They were also very popular in the Habsburg court and we know that because there were over 40 operas that had Chalamots in them. But I need to tell you a little bit more about the fact that they come in packs um, in consorts, just like recorders do. So the one I, I'm holding here is the descant, but there is the soprano, the tenor, the bass. Uh, and in fact, there is one even bigger, but I don't have it with me today. Composers that liked to write for it um, were people like Vivaldi and Telemann. And they quite often liked to write for more than one. You'd get two, or three and they would often be paired with quite unusual instruments um, and probably our uh, most prolific composer for the Chalamot in its own right almost as a solo instrument would be Graupner and he was a German harpsichord player a contemporary of Handel and Bach and he absolutely loved the Chalamot probably even more than I do and that's saying quite a lot. I think probably the most interesting thing about the Chalamot 
is the fact that when you see it, you think it's going to be a really high sound because it's tiny. Um, and physics tells us it should make a high sound. And I've absolutely no idea why it sounds so low and like a beautiful owl singing in the breeze, um, but it does. I always love the fact that audiences look so surprised when you first play your very first note for them. And they're completely taken aback and they, I can see love in their eyes. And the, this instrument, it's, it's had quite an interesting development because you had chalamos going along in history and you also had Baroque clarinets going along in history. And they had very different roles in musical society. The chalamo would play the low notes and often would play together in their little packs. The Baroque clarinet was almost like a sort of virtuosic trumpet player. It played the high notes, it played loud. It was often having concertos written for it that were really difficult and fast. Um, and somewhere along the line, these two instruments amalgamated and you had the low notes, the chalamos, uh, notes of the chalamo, and then you had the clarinet register of the Baroque clarinet, and that is really how the clarinet that we know today came about. And we still, when we play the low notes, say we're playing notes in the chalamo register, and we say when we're playing high notes that we're playing it in the clarinet register. So um, we, 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 we're still harking back to our lovely past. <laughs> apologize now to all you purists out there because you might be wondering why I'm holding my reed on with a hairband and I suppose that's not very authentic but you know what I got a feeling that the Chalamo players of the day would have just held their reeds on with whatever they could find and as you can see we've got a hairband there I've got an elastic band two elastic bands there and a shoelace and it does just the job <laughs> 